What's up KBFers? Here's the deal. Today I'm going to talk to you about the biggest mistakes anglers make when pursuing sponsorships. All right, so here's the deal. We're going to talk about three of the biggest mistakes that anglers make and then I'm going to do some kind of additional bonus things you can do wrong if that makes sense. In other words, things to not do. So I'm going to start off by toot my own horn a little bit mostly so that I quantify my ability to make these statements and to you know kind of validate them so I have been a pro staff director for several companies and have done quite well at it uh, I've built some world-class teams uh, I've been part of coming into pro staffs that have been in existence and I've been part of creating them from scratch so I've got that part of my experience base to pull from I also own and have owned several companies where I utilize pro staffers and I manage those myself instead of having a separate pro staff director. So I understand the return on investment that a company needs and how a pro staff or promotional staff or a sponsored angler or anglers can benefit your bottom line and how you got to manage or how you have to manage what you're compensating them with whether it's in cash in kind uh, or other methods and so i've got that experience piece and then on top of that i'm also a sponsored athlete you know angler myself and so i understand what the expectations are the deliverables the return on investment i know what works and what doesn't work but when you take all of those three and you add them together and you understand that i've worked as a pro staffer or I've worked with pro staff or sponsorships in every level, meaning working for a company and managing their pro staff, owning my own company and managing my pro staff, and then being part of pro staffs uh, across multiple different genres. And let me, let me explain that for a second because they do have different uh, reasonings behind which ones you pursue and how and the way that you approach them. I'll do another video on this series where I talk about specifics of that but that'll be at a later date and then if you're watching this video then it'll be linked up in the description box if i haven't gotten to that yet it won't be so just bear with me um there's endemic and non-endemic sponsorships and, and let me explain the two differences endemic sponsorships are basically i'm a fisherman so they're fishing related companies non-endemic sponsorships are sponsorships where they're just looking to reach a broader audience uh, and you happen to be a, an influencer or a personality that has the ability to do that um, you know, so uh, not a fishing specific product. And so uh, non-endemic sponsorships um, are really a little bit more difficult to get. Uh, and you have to have a pretty good core base of sponsorships uh, at, the, at the endemic level before you go that route. And so, again, I'll follow back up with this video uh, and then I'll link it up uh, in, a, in a card and I'll come back and promise you that I'll update this video because this topic is very uh, near and dear to my heart. And I know it's something that I get asked about probably uh, as much as anything else. Um, I get called a professional angler uh, on quite a bit of, uh, you know, media. And, you know, I'll just start off by saying I don't consider myself a professional angler. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a business owner, which, you know, uh, I'm a entertainer, a host, and uh, I do a lot of consulting, um, product development, product improvement, marketing, branding, uh, more so than the actual professional fishing part. I'm not out winning tournaments and making my living specifically doing that. If I wanted to play the game of saying I'm a professional angler, I make 100% of my income other than my military retirement from fishing, so I could play that game, but for the sake of the the purest definition, I don't consider myself a professional angler. I'm an entertainer, a television host, you know, an entrepreneur, uh, both. Um, anyway, so let me just, I'll go down that road in a different video. Let me talk to you about the biggest mistakes you can make in pursuing sponsorships. The number one biggest mistake, and generally this can be fatal, okay? When I say fatal, meaning you'll probably never have another opportunity with that company again, um, because I used to have a list of DNA, do not answer, or DNC, do not call, or DNR, do not respond when I manage pro staffs. And I would put somebody on that list if they did some of these things. And here's the number one. The number one, do not send an email to a company. Do not make contact with a company. Don't talk to them at a trade show in their booth. Uh, do not just kind of say it in passing. And do not respond to them on social media in any way, shape, form, or fashion saying, if you guys give me your product, then I'll promote it. 
that does two things for you in a negative manner. It says one, your endorsement's for sale. It says two, that you don't really care about whether or not the product is quality, you're gonna promote it just because they gave it to you. In general, the people that you may have following you that you're gonna be able to influence are watching that same social media channel. They're watching that same video or whatever and they realize that your endorsement is hollow. That being said, don't send a private email even to a company that says, hey, really love your product and I would love to promote it, but only if you give it to me. Uh, by and large, um, all of my sponsorships, with the exception of maybe two or three since I got started, um, you know, kind of getting up over that hump and being a little more influential, you know, eight years on television and, and, a, and a large tournament series that I run and manage and own and a couple of successful businesses have put me in a position where I get opportunities that I wouldn't have taken early on based on me sticking to my character and to my principles. And those were um, I would not endorse something I didn't buy. Uh, some of those things have changed a little bit, mostly because I get so much stuff. And then when a product gets sent to me, I'm not going to fake it to you guys and say, yeah, I went out and bought it. Sometimes I come in contact with those products, you know, via randomly, they sent it to me. They contacted my wife through, through our social media channels uh, or via email and said, we'd love you guys to check out this product and evaluate it. What's beautiful about that for me is I a lot of times get the products before they even make it to the market. But I'm not sitting here and blow smoke up your skirt and tell you that to, in this day, I could have told you this five years ago, but today that I have paid for every single product that I've ever endorsed, uh, for the most part, that's true. Uh, and by and large, that's true. But I will tell you that I will not endorse a product and I cannot endorse a product that I wouldn't pay for. Uh, and that if the sponsorship, you know, went away that I wouldn't be willing to, you know, purchase at full retail price like I'm expecting um, you guys to do. So number one rule, don't contact a company and say, if you'll sponsor me, if you'll let me use your product, then I'll promote you. Because they basically are going to look at that and say, yeah. Well, then it's worthless and you probably they won't probably tell you why they'll just not respond or they'll respond and say, hey, unfortunately, we don't have an opportunity right now. And then you'll probably never get that shot again because you became the do not answer guy or gal. Um, so the next thing is the so that's number one. Number two is when you send a resume or when you send a, um, a solicitation, uh, whatever you want to call it, an email, keep it short for the first one. Uh, don't tell a company your life story. When I was three years old, I started fishing with my grandpa and then there, and I also fished with my daddy. And then after high school, everybody around here knew me as the best angler in the world. And if you ask anybody around here, you ain't nobody gonna tell you there's a better angler around here. Look, let me break this down for you. Being a great angler is a given. If you've got to quantify whether or not you're a good angler, you're already behind the power curve. So don't waste the first paragraph, the first 20 to 30, uh, seconds of a conversation and don't waste that opportunity to quantify that you're a great angler. You should expect them to expect that you're a good angler, great angler, accomplished angler by the fact that you're pursuing that sponsorship or let your actions speak louder than words and don't tell them. Okay. Talk to them about who you are in very short, uh, very short, uh, snippets. It should take you longer than 15 seconds. And when I say longer than 15 seconds, I'm being real, sit down in front of a computer, Turn on a clock, turn your, on your timer on a phone, and read out your proposal. If it takes you longer than 15 seconds or 20 seconds at the absolute max to get past who you are, it's too long, especially for initial contact. They'll come back to you if they want more information. And odds are, if somebody opens up something and it doesn't have you know, that quick intro so they can find out who you are, they're probably going to push it to the side and say they'll come back to it later, and then they won't. Uh, is part of this thing is not going on to part three, but part of part two is white space. A number one mistake that anglers make uh, in soliciting sponsorship is when they send a proposal in, it needs to be little short bites. It needs to be a paragraph no longer than three or four lines and then some white space and another paragraph and three or four lines and some white space and another paragraph, three or four lines and some white space. And then it shouldn't be more than a page ever for initial contact. And uh, always include your socials, always give them the opportunity to go find out more about you if they want to. But the number one rule, like I said, is don't just say, I'm going to, you know, do it if you give it to me. So the number two rule should be that when you're soliciting them, you should be telling them you're already using their product and what you love about it and what you can do for them. So the number two rule, I'm going to sum it up, is don't spend your time talking about you. Spend your time talking about what you can do for them, what the return on investment would be if they partnered with you. 
Think about it as a partnership, not what they can do for you, what you can do for them, but what you guys can do for each other. But more importantly, really drive home the return on investment. This is what I feel like I can do for you. And here's what I'd like to, you know, here's how I'd like to start it. Um, by and large, you're not going to be able to ask for money out of the gate. You're going to need to have a pro staff or professional uh, staff relationship, promotional staff, whatever you want to call it, relationship with them first. So start your solicitation off with, I'd like to, I love your product. I'm using it now. I'd like to be one of the first people to get your new products and help you develop the best possible products so that you stay ahead. And that's how you end up getting free product. Asking for product in exchange for your endorsement, uh, in my opinion, is a shot to the head. You're done and you'll, they'll never even tell you. Um, so the number two deal is make sure that you tell them what you can do for them, not what they can do for you up front. Let them know what you can do, how you can do it, where you can do it, your socials, you know, live tournaments that you attend, seminars that you conduct, whatever. Uh, but don't spend the whole time talking about yourself. That is a number one way to kill your opportunity is don't spend your whole time talking about yourself. Talk about them, what you love about them, what you can do for them, but quantify it all in less than a page and make sure uh, you put white space in there. Okay, so the number three uh, thing that you should never do when contacting a company, at least initially, actually probably never, but at least initially, and this one happens all the freaking time and I don't understand why this is not common sense. Do not contact a company and tell them why you love their product because another company's product is garbage. Most companies don't spend their time running down another company to build themselves up maybe specifically not in, in endemics, you know, not, in, I mean, in, in, and you get into something like Coke and Pepsi and Ford and Chevy and Miller Lite and Bud Light, things like that, they're going to do that, but that's on a grander scale. Uh, in, in most situations in an industry, uh, it's a small industry and that they, they build their reputation and they build their brand on the merits of their product, not trying to devalue other products. So if you start off your uh, solicitation or your initial contact with them by saying that, then you're going to shoot yourself in the foot because they're going to know that you're going to be promoting their product in a way they don't want their product promoted and representing their company in a way they don't want their company represented. So keep that in mind. All right, so those are the top three. Let's get into some honorable mention type things right now. Um, sorry, I got a little sweat in my eyes. Got an ambulance going by. Anyway, I apologize for that. Here's the deal. Number one honorable mention. Use capitalization, proper punctuation, and don't speak like you're texting to somebody. If you're 19 years old and you've spent your entire teenage years texting in using the letter U for the word U or the number four for the word four and that kind of stuff, and that's gotten you by in life, it will not get you by in the professional world. It will not get you by in the first impression that you're going to make with a company. Um, so don't do that. Be professional. Use full sentences, full words, proper grammar, that kind of stuff. Uh, secondly, do not use... Um, expletives don't drop an f-bomb or you know even like lesser you know profanity like shit or damn or ass or something like that in your initial contact because that's not it doesn't put forth a good message um, secondly don't use um, uh, that opportunity that first opportunity to try again to speak too much about yourself in any regard don't reference what other pro staffs you're on don't reference what you know things you've done again talk about them in fact here's a little bonus thing my number one most effective strategy for having developed relationships with companies that i'm now sponsored by not pro staff but sponsored by is my initial contact with them was simply a letter an email or walking up to them in a booth and says love your product use your product going to continue to use your product and if there's ever anything that i can do for you let me know there's no ask so one of these bonuses is let your first contact be a no ask contact remember that no ask contact you're contacting them telling them what you love about your product you're contacting them telling them a couple of improvements you would make but always temper that with some type of compliment because trust me they don't want to hear how jacked up their product is that you're saying you would like to promote um, so you got to balance that. You can do that a little bit later on when you've got a little more clout and you can play that game. Uh, secondly, um, do not, do not, um, you know, bad mouth another promotional effort that they can do. I get this all the time uh, from guys looking to to be sponsored by me or my one of my companies or for me to help them get connected with a company that I'm connected with. Um, and they say, I see that you guys sponsor 
you know, so-and-so and they ain't doing anything for you, I'll triple what they're doing. That is just like bashing another company. Don't come in and bash somebody and undermine somebody that they've already got a relationship with because that's a quick way to make yourself look like an ass and a quick way to get yourself put on the DNR, DNC, DNA list. Um, and then last but not least, what I tell every angler that comes in contact with me that's looking for, hey man, I love what you're doing, I'd like to do what you're doing one day, I tell them this, take out your gear that you've already bought, right, that you use, and lay it out on the ground and go from front to back and make a list and start promoting those companies through commenting on their social media, through getting your name to show up in their tags at the top, through tagging them when you use the product. But one thing that you gotta do, and this is my last bonus, and then I'm jumping off this video and I'll see you guys uh, later in the week with a couple more videos, but here's the deal. Um, you've got to have a balance in your promotional content and your lifestyle and you're just doing it content. And that balance is four to one. You should have four times as much content just showing the product being used, just showing yourself, uh, experiencing the, the product, using the product as you do promoting the product. So if you're gonna pedal stuff, if you see these girls that drop, you know, post on their page with the teeth whitener or the certain bikini company that they're sponsored by or, you know, the selfie with a hair bow in or, or whatever, dudes do the same thing. Those are just the three that popped up. So, you know, the trail camera guy or the guy that's like, I use this feed. If you've got 50 posts about the products that you use and no post about the success of you using them, then your endorsement doesn't mean anything. So you should have four to one content of success and using and integrated and real world stuff more so than you do the actual plugs or promos. So anyway, guys, that's the top reasons that you are unsuccessful or you will be unsuccessful in pursuing sponsorships if you do the don'ts and a couple things that you should do to help you more success, help you be more successful. Again, I'm gonna expand on this series. It is still some, uh, something I've done several times, but it's something that just keeps coming up. It's something that people keep being interested in and i feel like it's something i'm uniquely qualified to talk about because i've done it at every level i've owned my own companies i've worked for companies i am a sponsored uh, angler myself um you know and i'm pretty proud of the fact that i've worked hard enough to be one of the most sponsored guys at least in the kayak fishing space uh and i've done a pretty good job both with um endemic sponsorships and non-endemic sponsorships and they're getting even better every day so believe in what you use use what you believe in don't spend the whole time talking about yourself be sure to use proper punctuation grammar don't use text message shorthand language um, and again no profanity no expletives and don't bash either companies or other pros or other promotional efforts that a company is using and you'll get a lot further a lot faster guys i'm chad hoover with kayak bass fishing y'all do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button turn on that notifications bell and leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about the video. We'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> ha.